I'm gonna show you some gold deposits in an area that I don't think you've ever been to. Just follow the tracks. Got into them. This way, come on. Into that thing. That's right, we're in Athens, Greece. And that sits on top of the Acropolis, which is the Parthenon. So let's get into it. All right, now before I get started, I want to give a little background history of what we're standing on, which is the Acropolis, and why this place was built on. For those of you that don't know, this is one of the highest points in all of Athens. The only higher point is that one right over there. Now there's actually four of those in the valley. We're in a big, huge basin. These are actually referred to as klepa. This is the end result of a thrust plate that has been pushed over of limestone, and then a huge river came through and washed or eroded most of it away. So you only have these four points left behind. And because they're so high, a lot of people like to build on top of them because they're great fortifications for their city. And you can see that in the background because it's made out of limestone, very easily eroded by carbonic acid, which is basically rainwater. You're gonna have all different types of cave formations inside of all the limestones, which is great for passages and storage. Also, it's great because water likes to seek out brecciation that are in between the fault. Remember the thrust fault that I was telling you about. Now, we're gonna get into the thrust faults a little bit later. And I'm gonna explain to you because there's some confusion out there about the difference between a thrust fault and a reverse thrust fault. And trust me, there is a big difference. So I'm gonna take you around and I'm gonna explain some of the geology that we're standing on right now. And I'm also gonna tell you where their gold deposits are in the hills, especially to the north. Because I know that's why you wanna know. I wanna know it too. So come on, let's go. Now from what I understand, it took 10 years to build that thing. You imagine today it would take 10 years to put in a stop sign. Earlier I was telling you that there are four major clippers in this area and two miners there's the other one right over there and the other three were the ones that i showed you and then you can see the ocean out below us now clipper is nothing more than part of a thrust plate and you have a limestone thrust plate that was put in here now we're sitting in a huge basin and that basin used to have a sea here now that sea is what created the limestone that we're standing on because of tectonic forces it pushed up a huge segment of limestone through a thrust fault and then it thrusted that older limestone on top of what? On top of that old Athenian schist. And that's how you can get older rocks on top of newer rocks is when you have thrust faults. This is a fantastic example of what I was telling you about. See these? These striations in here? These are called slick insides. And what does that tell you? That tells me that the landmass here was grinding on top of this one. And there's a good reason for that. And the reason why is because this huge chunk of limestone that's over my head was riding up and down on top of this schist, this Athenian schist that's which is down below my feet. This isn't like the schist that you're probably normally used to seeing. This schist is only weakly metamorphosed. And in between, look at this, see this? See how it's all broken up and brecciated? You know why? Because when this guy's riding over the top of the schist, what does it do? It grinds it all up into a breccia. They call it fault breccia. And that's exactly what this is. And this is good areas to look for gold, as a matter of fact, too, because you have all these little zones in here where the, the hydrothermal fluids can get in and deposit. And look at, I even got iron in there. You know I'm gonna be sampling that. So I wanted you to see this. Now, the reason why this is important is because the limestone that's over my head is 100 million years old, and the Athenian schist is only what 30 million years old and how do you get something like that to occur well you have what's called a thrust fault thrust faults do this all the time they always put the older types of rocks on top of the newer rocks now remember you have two different types of thrust faults you have a standard thrust and you have what's called a reverse thrust now i know there's a lot of confusion out there about the two but the bottom line is this with a standard thrust, you have this really gentle dipping fault line right there, your fault plate. It's usually under 30 degrees. And so you have this guy pushing up over the top of this guy, and that's standard thrust. But when it's more than 30 degrees, say like 50 degrees, and you have this tectonic force compressing the two, this guy, what, he wants to ride straight up. You see the difference? So this is a regular thrust because it's under 30 degrees. So, what's going to happen? That's right. You're going to have this stuff right up over the top. The older material. And then all the newer material that was on top will get eroded away. So you have the older limestone, Acropolis limestone, which is 100 million years old, sitting on top of this newer Athenian schist, which is on the bottom. Make sense? And then in between, 
as these things are pushing along each other like this, you get what's called fault breccia, which is this stuff right here. It's all ground up, perfect place for gold deposition. You see all this pegmatitic crystal forming in these bugs and these fissures? That's because the brecciated zone, the brecciated limestone that I was telling you about, the cataclastic section that's in between the limestone and this beautiful pink looking schist, the thinning schist, that creates the perfect environment for water to get in there. And when it does, it brings what? Mineralization with it. And so you're gonna have all these little tiny sections in here of pegmatitic crystal forming in these, these little fissures and fractures and bugs. And because limestone easily erodes with carbonic acid, you're gonna see caves and all types of little pockets in between the contact zone where that brecciated zone of limestone is. Remember I told you about that? You're gonna see all these cave formations down in there. It's perfect because the water can percolate through that brecciated zone, that cataclastic zone that I was telling you about. You know that there's a whole bunch of cave down below us. And I'll bet you the Greeks knew that too. And I'll bet you they got down into it. If you notice a lot of the blocks, even places like Peru and Cusco, they have these little ears on the blocks. You see that? Now I know what those ears are for, but I wanna know if you know what those ears are for. So go ahead and leave me a comment down below if you know what these ears are for, cause they're all over on the blocks. And here's another one too, see it? It's a smaller ear, but it's on the side. Now the majority of the gold that comes out of Greece comes from Northern Greece on the Western side of the Thrace mountains. And they've been pulling it out there for hundreds if not thousands of years. Now, another thing to keep in mind is that they found a lot of gold in the islands surrounding Greece. There's hundreds of islands, and some of them are not even inhabited, and they have the perfect geological structures to support gold deposition. Now, most of the gold that is forming up there is epithermal deposits. And remember, I told you what epithermal means. It's just shallow vein structures and systems. And the gold that's coming out of there is native and telluride. Now, as far as panning for gold, like fines or even little tiny flakes, you're gonna have to go to the Galakas River. They have been finding gold there for hundreds of years. So you'll have your best luck there. In fact, they have the same type of rock structures that we have over in the United States. They have the dacite domes, they have andesites, they have rhyolites and mineralization in rhyolites. And you're looking for anything that has advanced argillic alteration with intense silicification. Those are gonna be no brainers. And of course, like I always say, the redder the better, okay? That's really easy to remember. Now, in case you didn't figure it out, those little ears on the stones, those are used in the construction process so they can lift them up and put them into place. I don't know if you noticed, but some of those stones look like they were cut with a saw, didn't they? And there's even a technique called stone softening. If you guys know about that, leave me a comment down below. Below. Don't forget, we're going to be giving away one kilogram silver bars at the end of the month. They're huge, all the way down to one ounce silver bars. And we're also giving away a Gold Monster 1000. You can't beat that. And all this is going to be at the end of this month. So you're going to want to hurry and sign up. All you got to do is click on this link right here, make a $10 pledge, and you instantly qualify for all the stuff that we're going to be giving away. And I'll see you on the next video.